I'm Mandeep. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the Conscious Living Project. Each week we discuss deep and meaningful questions about what it is to live a conscious life. Right, Mandeep? We do. <laughs> and you know, there's so much information on the internet. We decided on our website to create some podcasts, yes. some tips and articles, which we think actually really helpful and maybe they could help you too. It's actually brain food. So please do come and join us. And thank you so much for participating in this project with us. Thank you. Second question on the Proust question there is, what's your greatest fear? So another big topic for us That's a to good talk one. about. So if I think of the first few things that come into mind when I think of fear, there are typical things. Um, and fear is actually quite primal, isn't it? If you think in terms of evolution, fear is something that immediately tells you something is wrong. Yep. It's about survival and you have to protect yourself. Um, in our modern day and age, we have lots of different fears. So whether it's FOMO, a fear of missing out, um, yeah. you have fear of loneliness, which we had in our Less Is More campaign where people are confronting the things that they want to have less of. It can be fear of, I suppose, public speaking. Yeah. Fear of death. So a huge range of things. And I think fear, how I find it in today's society and culture, is something which people are either doing one of two things. So you have to push through it. Yeah. And the other is just to quietly suffer. Because <laughs> fear, things like failure, yeah. is a big thing now, I think. Especially because we do have so much information. We have so many of the tools that we didn't have before. Yeah. And we know we're privileged. So it's almost linked to the question that we had before about happiness. Is that if you have all the tools, it's overwhelming. And you're yeah. afraid because you're going to make mistakes. So that's massive, I know, to start everything off with interesting but those are I suppose my initial thoughts I think if I hear the word fear I think in this day and age it's quite interesting because as much as I think lots of us are very privileged and you know the fears we end up having could be you know fears of what we have too much so how do we decide to do with it mm -hmm. but it's also I guess it's sad and also slightly worrying because there are people that generally are fearful in their yes, lives very in true. a very traditional sense yeah um, so and it, it it does feel sad because you're thinking in this day and age there's general fear for mm. survival, general fear for your life. Yeah. Um, and suddenly when you see that current that's still there, then I guess for me, if I think of my fears, mm. and with that, I don't want to be belittle what I, what I feel, what my worries are, but then it probably gives me very good context of probably becoming a proactive person to deal with any fears that I have and saying actually what is genuinely a fear of and is it even a fear? Yeah. Because I feel like we're very quick to add, um, add you know, a label to something saying I fear this, I fear that. And it dramatizes something. As soon as you dramatize something, you run away with it, and mm. you feel like it's beyond your control. It's like a barrier. Precisely, it? precisely. Yeah. So I think if I see fear, I see it in two different ways. One is very stark. Where I see like real fear, and what I traditionally think of fear. And there are other types of fear which affect me and my life day to day. Um, things which might inhibit me. Things like why it would scare me from doing things or outcomes. Yeah. Those to me suddenly become, I guess, a bit more digestible suddenly because mm. I can see them in a different light yeah um but if I think of it I do also think they should definitely be dealt with I feel like from my perspective if I am fearful of something mm. actually ignoring it to me feels foolish yeah. because I've not really tapped into that yeah problem there's something underlying there mm. too and therefore how can I possibly see the world in a particular light yeah. if I'm actually like not dealing with particular things that I that I'm trying to avoid that's true so I suppose you would say there's practical fear yeah and then maybe a philosophical fear yeah pretty much at the end of the day um, and I think that's very interesting because also in this day and age, we do have certain things such as terrorism or nuclear threat. I was reading a recent study in the Harvard Business you know, Medical Journal, and what they found was interesting is that our generation of people who have lived through certain events, and obviously they've happened before as well, but hadn't actually, you know, as a nuclear threat, hadn't actually lived through an actual nuclear threat, but these were still fears that people held yeah. in their top 10 consideration. And I think fear is very dangerous because it creates this sort of mental cloud which is spread throughout society and that hangs over you. And it has even greater power. Like when you say if you're afraid of the dark, because there are things you cannot see. Yeah, it's a yeah. sense of what is unknown. As a child, it's quite literal and actually quite innocent and you realise quite nice. And then as you get older, it becomes full of all the demons that you don't deal with, whether they're ones that society made or the ones you have yourself. So I think it's very interesting that you also say is actually recognising what things are. Fear maybe is an umbrella term, would yeah. you say, when you actually have to break it down into something yeah. more manageable instead. Yeah. I agree. I also just think um, 
fear is something actually um, you often don't actually discuss with other people Mm -hmm. because I think sometimes it sounds fatalist or if it scares you enough, why on earth would you discuss it? Um, But I think going back to our, our discussion and conversation about happiness, like fearfulness is also something which you like not only do you need to address it but there are lots of elements that yeah. create fear mm. um and for example like i could give a perfect example like what am i fearful of genuinely i have a great life and i'm actually very fearful of very much which is incredible mm-hmm. but what would i be fearful of actually i'd fear that i had so much at my fingertips and i didn't do anything useful with it yeah. i didn't add value to someone else's life i didn't really um, push myself to the best of my capabilities not because I was so busy trying to achieve something to say yes I made this amount of money or actually my name is up here or these many people know you it's much yeah. more of just as a human of all the capabilities I had and I had compassion and I had I'm a fully bodied person and I have some level of intellect and I've had access to education did I do anything with that mm, yeah. and then the fear is like I basically wasted that if I haven't done something which I feel made a difference mm. and suddenly if you think gosh that is one of my fears I think god can I do anything about it yes. well of course I can do something about yeah. it because I've already acknowledged probably that there's a fear sitting outside there mm. and if I look at oh yes I've got particular attributes that are really my strengths because somebody else benefit from those of course they could but then yeah. how do I figure that out well maybe I can look at a charity and say god you know um I could probably go and help out somebody who has got great self-confidence. I think my confidence is quite okay. Yeah. I'd love to meet somebody like that and discuss mm. how I probably approach things and see if that would help them. Yeah. And suddenly, I'm probably sharing some of my my best, I guess, um, characteristics that I have to maybe help somebody else. Yes. And suddenly I can maybe make a difference because maybe that person's like, mm. look, this is a work in progress, but at least I want to acknowledge that they probably felt the same at one time. Yes. And I can see how I can become better about it. Yeah. And so, therefore, I've done like something probably quite small, but from an outside perspective, but for me, mm. I actually actually went out yes. to try and address tiny crumbs that lead up to, like, a big, big breadcrumb of fear. Mm, yeah. So I suppose that is very interesting because, as you said, in a certain type of life that you live where you don't have to fight for very basic things, yeah. it then means you actually have a duty as well, don't you, to actually consider where has life placed me, what other things that I do have, and then how can I step beyond my fears which actually can be I don't want to say it but insignificant to a degree I mean you can you have a crippling fear of things that yeah, there's yeah, something of deep and you've experienced something and it plays over and over again one thing I find quite interesting is that sense of turning your fear into curiosity yeah and as you said it's that sense of self-questioning of self-awareness apart from the big existential questions that we have why am i here what happens when i die and then being afraid of both those things because there is not one place on earth where you can find a solid answer religion or regardless it's very tough to find that but beyond those the day-to-day things that we suffer or we fear we worry about it's like actually why do i feel like that where does it come from Who is it around me that's reflecting that? Who is it around me who's encouraging that subconsciously to come to the surface? Yeah. And that's when you can understand, well, really, my fear, let's link it back to your idea of self-confidence, a skill you have. And then conversely, some struggles with public speaking, getting on a stage, a presentation. Well, then you have to learn. You have to then decide, I'm going to set aside this amount of time in the evening. I'm going to take a course. I'm going to sign up to a stand-up comedy show in three months' time. I have to have some material ready, and I have to be on stage and speak. And thereby, you face it in, you know, whatever fear, squarely in the eyes. You've come up with a plan, which was at your disposal. Yeah. And you, at the end, feel much better for it. As you said, if you then go and contribute to someone else, it's even better. It's more of a win-win for everyone involved. And then fear becomes less of a bogeyman. Just something which is a temporary obstacle, would you say? Yeah. Rather than a full time sort of hooded figure which sort of hovers around. But do you, you think it's easy for us to say that when we genuinely haven't got such crippling fears? Do you think yeah. every fear actually is surmountable? Because I query that too, because I can turn around and say I can take these particular steps to deal with a particular fear of my own, but I still feel like my fears, you know, like. For example, you might be like scared of heights, for example. Some people, like, that doesn't even re- register on their radar because, of course, they don't mind heights. Mm. But some people, like, if you say to them, look, slowly get used to going up higher and higher, but they're like, I'm actually just so crippled. Yeah. 
I can't do it, I'm too scared. Yes. And then I wonder in those moments, what do you genuinely do? Is there actually a solution to that? Mm. I'm not saying therefore do you become defeated by it, or do you sometimes recognise as a human I've got limitations? I think that's exactly it. I think linked to fear is often a lack of acceptance, yeah. you know, that certain things cannot change and shouldn't change. And actually, you do have to appreciate there's certain things, if they're endemic, if it's something you're born with and you've really tried hard, it can be all sorts of fears and really embrace what it is it's like and don't be the one who's always self-conscious about it again I I know it's really easy for us to say it if you've tried hard if you've made your peace with it if you know still everything else you're able to do beyond that fear the courage you have to do many other things that's really empowering and that's the idea of fear of failure turning on its head saying okay I know that's not where I'm meant to be I yeah. know that's not my yeah. strength is and I know I can't control that I think it's more about I think you're saying it's trying to own it which yeah. is the way it's as in like fundamentally deal with fear however you want to but deal with it mm-hmm. as in don't let it like take over you and if you say look I am scared of yeah maybe I'm scared of heights or maybe I'm actually scared that I'm just not good enough at this job or I'm scared that actually I'm not fitting my duties as a particular as a sibling as a mother as a father and just say okay I can see that that's a real fear but I recognise it and I take steps to do something. But if I can't, then it has to be put out there too. I have the support network. Yes. I have people that I can discuss this with and try to think about it, realise mm. that it can't weigh me down, it can't bog me down to the extent that the fear was what I was left with. Yes. Because like, fundamentally, you have to function day to day, don't you? You have mm. to like try and make a difference. You have to try your best and start every day afresh. Yes. But take control of the fear, whichever way you can. Mm. And sometimes, yeah, you can surmount it and it's great, but sometimes you can't, but that's not necessarily seen as like, oh, I failed at trying to deal with my fear. It's just like, exactly. this is a type of different type of fear that I, and my makeup means that I can't deal with it head on as I would like to, but mm. I'm not ashamed of having yeah. it either. I agree. It's just really talking about things and it's the labels you put on something. Yeah. You know, as I started our conversation about those big things that we have fears about, they're often inherited views as well. It's like we just know age-old philosophers and writers, artists have been debating the same few questions and where your fear lies. And, you know, you spoke about this fear of not fulfilling your potential and having a real sense of honouring the life you've been given. I completely agree and I feel that same urgency, if I don't say fear, of actually making sure that I do what I felt was in my realm to do and that any moment where I veered off it, the fact that I came back to it was what counted above all. Yeah, agreed. So I think fear is one to be owned, second to be, I suppose, mediated yeah. in many ways. Yeah. And then once it's something you've tried your best at, it's something you cannot fully deal with, but you own it, as you said. Yeah. You know, and talking about it is really helpful, isn't it? We know that if you meet yeah. with friends and I think it's good because I think it's a good thing to discuss like with many things. It's great to discuss like things which make you happy, which are positives. But I think you must dis- discuss fear because sometimes people can just help you dispel it. People can relate to it. Perspective, and right. Give you perspective. And suddenly, like, it can just make things a bit easier. Because I also think, like, if you put things into the universe, the universe always responds back to you in the most positive okay. sense. Mm-hmm. But you just must be open to hearing it. And I feel like if you did have a fear of something in particular, if you discuss that with someone saying, you know what, like, I've tried to deal with this and it is crippling. And I probably don't show them because I'm, like, I'm madly embarrassed. Actually, I just think... It's not appropriate, like, what is my deal? Like, I've mm-hmm. got such a great laughing, I'm scared of this. I almost feel like if you start just, like, putting that out there, someone else might say, yeah, you know, I feel like that too sometimes. Yes. This is how I deal with it. Or, like, you know what? I probably can't relate to that, but I know someone that can. Or, you know what? I read this really good book mm. about it. And actually, it made it just feel a bit more... It was less serious, but it gave it, like, a comedic accent to it. And I felt like, oh, this actually makes a bit more sense to me. And mm. it wasn't such a terrible thing to acknowledge yeah. or accept. So I think talking about it dispels, dispels like the weightiness of a fear, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and that's easy to do. Like it doesn't mean you have to like if you're scared of heights, like suddenly going to a really high mountain and just no. find your way down. No, it was just putting it out. Then I think sometimes even if you hear your own fear, articulating it out loud. Yeah. yeah, and I think above all, action is the thing. So yeah. as I said, often the questions we have are more philosophical. They are more to do with. a a life that allows you time to think of these things you know which is a very different state to be in even if we were to go back like to our our parents generations their fears are different you know it's like providing for your family you come into a foreign country you don't speak the language the skills you had back in your home country they don't count here you have to start all over again and your greatest fear is that you made a big leap and it didn't work for you and therefore you don't have any other choice apart from to make it work yeah 
So I think now in this day and age, we're very lucky to be born here and we really embrace the life that we have. I think that's that actually interesting because it's actually really good if you do look for a wider context around you, but mm. it literally kind of just being your own family. Yeah. And you can see maybe it could be your parents, it could be your grandparents, it could be your siblings, it could be your cousins. Everyone probably did have or have fears at a particular time in their lives mm -hmm. and they've got through it, they've gone through that phase in their life and come up yeah. the other side. But I guess we never stop and think of that. And then mm. I guess the nice thing is like, you're only human. You're related, I'm sure, if like your parents match Shared experience, their fears, yeah. I'm sure you can probably find a way through it too. And actually it's not so big suddenly because it's you can relate to other people who have you know, it's not can't be the same fears necessarily, no. but they might come from the same place, could be the same degree of fear. Mm. Um, and the solutions could have been similar as well. Yeah. So it's actually useful you to stop and think, I'm not in my own learning or bubble trying to deal with this. But yeah, my parents might have had this particular fears and they got through it. How did they do that? Mm. And to be honest, it might have just been practical steps. Yeah. And then maybe you, you can take practical steps too. Yeah, I agree. And there's you know another idea where if you want to be frank with yourself, you know, one way you said was articulate it to yourself, speak with friends. Also, you can write it down, whether yeah. you journal formally or not, or sit in front of your computer and write down a few of the few things yeah. that are always sitting with you. Yeah. Kind of, it's you plus three in the back. Yeah, get it off your shoulders. Around. Get yeah. it off your shoulders. And I think one other method that could might help people, and I know other friends have spoken about it, is this idea of fear setting. So if you put down the things that you that genuinely trouble you, yeah. so there are bigger fears of terrorism things like that but separate the things that potentially in your control yeah that are more likely to occur and then put on what's the worst that's going to happen if I'm not good at my job what, what will happen to yeah. me if yeah. I don't have the love of the someone that I really want what's going to happen yeah address it it can be stark and it can be harsh and think well where am I now am I better off than letting that lurk yeah so could I get back to this level where I still have friends around me I have support around me yes I could and then it really lightens yeah, the load. Somehow. Absolutely, absolutely. I think yeah, it's just don't be crippled by something which you find is like as a fear. Try and like understand where it comes from, and then um, I guess take the power away from it. And yes. that is, I guess, why you're saying to like write it down because you see it on paper and or you speak to someone and then suddenly you hear it. Mm -hmm. um, and then start trying to take baby steps of. I think yeah, if you can try and get over a fear. It might seem really want to do and who knows like how that was weighing you down mm. you might have a rough yes. idea yeah. but until you start trying to address it you have probably maybe it was like you didn't reach your full potential as like a person or as an employee or as an entrepreneur and then you do address it so I think fear is there acknowledge it and see if you can do something about it but always with a positive mindset seek help where you need to seek help that mm. could be from a immediate circle from somewhere wider yes. it could be by actively taking steps by like jotting down your concerns trying to deal with it or actually just saying, I'm going to go out there and find better information on people that experience similar fears to me. Yeah. And then proactively take power away from that fear. Start bit of oxygen. Precisely. I think that's really smart and powerful. And the final thing that I would say is important is that fear is necessary too. Yep. Fear Agreed. isn't necessary, obviously, in a dictatorship, in a regime that is oppressive. Those fears we can all do without and we should work hard collectively to eradicate. But a certain degree of fallibility is really important. The ability to see suffering, to feel it, but still have that inner sense of balance. Yeah. And it's hard to strive and it's hard you know, to find that. But that, above all, doesn't mean you eradicate fear altogether. It's acting with, despite that. Yeah. In spite of that. Agreed, yeah. I guess, yeah, it's true. Like, you need to have a balance in life. You know, the light without... You, you wouldn't appreciate the light without the darkness. It's, it's similar to that, too. Like, we love fear for things, but maybe that fear makes you more appreciative of particular things as well. So, in balance, but don't let it take over. I agree. Hello.